Hey there, Caleb Logic here, and in this video I'm going to be talking about SwitchPod and a bunch of frequently asked questions we've gotten since we launched the Kickstarter campaign for it uh, just under two weeks ago. I'm about, this is day 14 now. We've raised almost $300,000, which that thing updates every time someone backs it, um, which is pretty crazy to me. That's over 3,000 people that have voted with their dollars to, you know, be behind our idea to make SwitchPod as well as that's over 3,000 switch pods for us to make now. So just really excited about the progress so far on the campaign and thank you everyone for the support and everyone that's backed it or shared the campaign. I really appreciate that. But in this video, we're gonna be talking about a lot of the questions that people have been asking about, you know, why did we make certain choices when developing it and things about shipping and putting ball heads on it and all that kind of stuff. So more to come in this video. But first I'm gonna turn this little counter around just so it's not so distracting. There, that's better. One of the first comments I've seen a lot is, without a ball head, this thing is basically useless. Well, I don't think it is personally because honestly, if you don't put a ball head on this, we've still shaped this to be a good height for holding it out in front of you when you're filming. And also, this enables you to screw your camera on and off really fast without having to deal with quick release plates, which I think are a pain to have to screw onto all your different cameras and to screw off and stuff. So. I don't necessarily think this thing needs a ball head. Now, if you're going to be placing this on uneven surfaces, yeah, you're probably going to want to put a ball head on this. If all you wanna do is tilt your camera up and down, then you have different options for that too. There's smaller, cheaper ones of the ones that Edelkrone makes where it just kind of pivots like this with your camera if that's all you need, but you can put any ball head on top of this. So we're not trying to reinvent the ball head yet. We're maybe working on one, but all you need to do is take a quarter 20 to three eighths adapter screw, these tiny little screws. You can screw it right on top of the switch pod here. And then most ball heads have a three eighth inch adapter screw on the bottom. So you would either screw this adapter into the bottom of your ball head and leave it on there all the time, or leave this adapter on top of the switch pod and then screw whatever ball head you have on there. There are hundreds, if not thousands of different ball heads out there in the market already that this will work with. So maybe we're working on our own ball head. We'll see, trying to make whatever we would create for a ball head as fast to use and as simple and as lightweight as a switch pod is. But in the meantime, you have a ball head, just put it on top. Next up, we have noise and sound. Now, I know in some of the videos that people have filmed, like in Peter McKinnon's video, it is noisy. I mean, this is metal on metal. And we used to have rubber between the legs that would soften that sound. That was something we noticed in early prototypes. And we had little rubber pads along the inside, but it was more important to us that the magnets that keep the legs together work the best as possible so that when you're carrying it, the legs don't just fly open. So potentially in a future version or something like that, maybe an add-on or something will create something that makes them softer sounding or quieter or something like that. For now though, I really don't think it's that big of an issue. If you're really worried about the sound and you're in tripod mode, you can actually just pick it up and hold it this way. When I was filming with Armando, he in particular put a heavy camera with a heavy lens on it pick this up and you can carry it around with just one leg because it's strong enough to do that. And when you want to close, you can do it quieter. You don't have to, you know, flip it open and close it really fast. So noise or sound might be something that we try to improve in a future version or some sort of add-on or thing that you can do. But to me, it's more important that the magnets function properly. And I actually like it without rubber and other things that might peel off, just super clean and simple with aluminum. That's another thing I wanna to touch on is people have asked about having grips on here. And we tried that too in earlier prototypes and maybe in the future, in a future version, we'll find a way to make it work. But because of the finger grooves and how smooth it is already to slide your hand up and down, I don't really think you need the grips. It's small enough that if you, if you hold it well, it doesn't really need grips. The grooves are enough, your hand is good and you can even kind of put your fingers within this groove part too if you really want to hold on to it, but I haven't found the need to have grips on it. Yes, that might help when it's cold or something like that because this is metal and this will get cold too, but if it's really that cold out, you're probably gonna have gloves on. So I know you kind of have these decisions to make when you're designing a product of throwing everything into it to make it super grippy and completely silent, but that might also make it more expensive and 
not let you use magnets to keep the legs closed. And so these are all things we've been considering as we're getting to this version 1.0 and shipping it to you all. But maybe in future versions, we'll find a way to do all these things even better. We've also gotten questions about, well, this thing doesn't bend, so it's useless. You can't wrap it around anything. And we didn't mean to make this wrap around. There's already a solution for that. The GorillaPod is great for that. It's great for wrapping around railings or trees or what have you, or bending into the perfect position. And this was not what we were trying to recreate. We weren't just trying to copy something that's already out there. Same thing with having it be a stabilizer or an electronic stabilizer. Adding electronics and adding batteries and all that kind of stuff adds to the cost. So that's something we chose not to do. We didn't want it to be heavier. There are a lot of gimbals that are out there already from companies like Moza and Zion and DJI and Movi. And, you know, we're not trying to compete in that arena either. So not making it bendable, not making it super adjustable, not making it have an electronic stabilizer. Those were all decisions we made in the design process because we wanted to make a simple product for a very specific purpose, which was to hold a camera out in front of you, to vlog or take pictures or what have you, and then be able to flip it open and set it down in tripod mode. We weren't trying to recreate a product that's already out there like a Gorilla Pod or like a gimbal. A couple questions we've been getting about shipping. Uh, we do have an estimated delivery date on Kickstarter of August, 2019. That is a realistic time frame for us to manufacture thousands of switch pods in another country, have them all be perfect and to ship them out to everybody. We are trying to accelerate that as much as possible based on the success of the campaign and being fully funded in less than 12 hours. That has definitely accelerated our time frame a little bit as much as possible to get these into your hands as fast as possible. But in all honesty, we don't really wanna push up the date that we're sharing with everyone just to get everyone's hopes up and then not be able to deliver on that. So. We're very confident in that August 2019 date. If we can deliver it sooner, we definitely will. I would love to get these into your hands as soon as possible, but we're gonna stick with that August date as our estimated delivery time, and we're gonna do everything we can to not be another Kickstarter project that just drags on for years and years. We're gonna deliver this as soon as we possibly can. Oh, and we'll be shipping worldwide. I've gotten these questions about, do you ship to Japan or this country or that country or wherever? If you're on earth, we're gonna try to get it to you. When you check out on Kickstarter, you choose your country that you'll ship it to, and then your shipping costs get added right there when you're backing the campaign. So just to know, we are shipping worldwide. A couple more quick questions before I wrap up. A lot of people have been asking for SwitchPods to review, to test out, to see if they wanna buy one, to, share it with their audience, what have you. And I would love to have a bunch of them to send around and to have people test them out, but we're really limited by how many we've made so far. We're trying to potentially make more before the big shipment gets made. And so there might be more opportunities to share them with people. But right now, I mean, I literally have these two and one more that we're you know, sending around to people or I'm traveling to people to show them in person and that sort of thing. So while I would love to be able to ship as many of these around to YouTubers and Instagrammers and who have you to make videos about the SwitchPod or to help share it with their audience, right now we just don't have enough for that. And we're trying to remedy that as soon as possible. But once we go into full manufacturing, there will be a lot more of them and we'll be at conferences and showing them at VidCon and Vid Summit and other places, I'll be at NAB. And so if you're at one of those places, that might be your uh, best chance to get your hands on one before we ship them from the Kickstarter campaign. Another thing I wanted to touch on is how we got certain people, switch pods, to talk about them or to make videos about them. I talked all about this with Pat Flynn, who co-founded SwitchPod with me on his podcast at smartpassiveincomepodcast.com slash session 356. We talked all about our thought process about influencers and just really focusing on making a product, sharing it with them while we were developing it and through happenstance and hard work and being the right place at the right time with the right people, being able to get certain people excited about the product and sending them one and seeing what happens. We didn't upfront pay anybody to make any videos about SwitchPod and we have been able to let people earn kind of a boosting commission if they do refer people as a thank you from us for talking about SwitchPod in front of their audience and that sort of thing through a platform called KickBooster. 
but it's an interesting world, the influencer marketing and trying to get your product in people's hands and have them talk about it. But honestly, I didn't see any of the videos that anyone's made before they went live. Any of the YouTubers, anything like that. I did help film some of them because I was in person and they're like, hey, can you hold the camera or can you help me get this shot? But I didn't influence any of the words they said or the footage they used or how they edited it or anything. So. It's an interesting place to be in because I'm having peers of mine that make videos on the internet just like I do, make videos about my product now, and so I'm very careful about not being too pushy about, hey, can you do a video about my product and help promote it? I just want to make uh, enough switch pods and make them as good as possible so that people are going to make those videos anyway. So that's it for this Q&A, this little FAQ section about SwitchPod. If you want to check out the campaign, you can go to switchpod.co. That'll redirect you to the Kickstarter campaign. And if you're watching this after the campaign's done, it'll redirect you to wherever you can pick up a SwitchPod. Let's check that counter and see if we pass 300. Ah, oh, still, still a couple backers away from passing 300,000, but I'm really thankful for all of you for backing the campaign, for all the support, all the positive comments and feedback, and the negative comments too that I read on blogs that are talking about SwitchPod that just, just don't get it, and that's okay. If you make a product for people and they don't understand, at least they're giving you feedback or criticism or hate or whatever that can influence a future version or iterations or maybe a ball head accessory we make from scratch, we'll see. But we appreciate you all, Pat and I, for making this campaign so big and uh, more to come. Still got 45, 46 days left in the campaign. We're going to be making a lot of switch pods and shipping them out all around the world. So I appreciate you. I've been Caleb Logic. See you in the next one.